Hello, so there was a forum thread the other week, or the other day I think it's still up, where people were arguing over what's better in a home defence scenario, swords, spears, things like that, you know, and I think maces were brought up as well and other things, but the entire point was, you know, which one would be better for sort of standard use in a house if you couldn't have access to a firearm. And I'm assuming this is always based on the fact that the um, person breaking in or people breaking in are armed with things like machetes, knives, crowbars, or not armed, you know, but they're out to do you harm. So in this theoretical thing, we're going to look at um, swords versus sort of pole arm argument, because again, with maces and warhammers people bringing up, they might work, but they're not the best. Out of the two options, you know, that people kept recommending, it always comes down to sort of pole arms like spears and things like that or halberd type, you know, heads versus swords. Now, the problem was there were some people that kept bringing up certain arguments to use against swords or use against spears. So what I'm going to try and do now is go over those points and see if they're actually valid. Now, a thing I'm going to keep pointing out in this video is with a pole arm, you do not need to have it if you're building your own or whatever for use in your own house. You do not need one that is, um, you know, full on really tall. Whoops, nearly knocked my build book over there. You don't need one that's really, really tall. As you can see, these are taller than me. I'm about five foot eight, so these probably come to about six feet um, with the handle and everything. But bear in mind, with any of these, if you wanted to, you could get a handle length of whatever suited you for what you wanted to use them for, which is gonna be the important point um, with these. So there you go, there's like a leaf tip spear. Um, I might just use the spear for demonstration on this, or I might use the glaive. I'm not going to use the bill hook, just because the bill hook isn't actually as ideal for this, because it's got more points on it. If you can actually see the bill hook there, there we go. Because obviously, with the glaive compared to the bill hook, um, the glaive is obviously a much sort of more um, straightforward blade shape. It's got a point on it, and it's also got, you know, the cutting edge. The bill hook has that, but the bill hook has the biggest anti-arm spike, and it also has the anti-rider spike on that side which we're not going to need in this scenario. But the spear is just as valid. Um, but like I said, the having a head like that on a pole arm I think gives the most points to a pole arm, so I'll use the glaive for this. Spear would work fine, but we're going to go on the thing that we have a bit of a chopping edge as well, just for um, the sake of the argument to give points to pole arms, because I'm going to you know, just do the thing of theoretically what would you could do to have the best case scenario for each. And to give the swords the most advantage, I'm going with a cutlass because these were literally designed for brawling in ships and things like that. So we've got on this one the handguard that protects your hands from incoming strikes. You can also punch with it. You've got the obviously cutting edge on this one and you've got the thrusting edge. So we're going to go over all the same points but testing the um, glaive versus the sword. The sword is a windlass one, so it's made in India. This is absolutely fine. It's based on one of the American naval cutlasses. I've had no issues with this whatsoever. It's actually a really good practical sword for the money. And the these two pole arms, the heads were done by Richard Weaponsmith or Richard Bow, uh, Bowman, depending on which name he uses on YouTube at the moment. He's got his own channel, so a little plug for him. He forged those for me. And then I mounted them onto garden tool um, poles. So, um, you know, there. I actually do use the bill hook quite often, like a garden bush hook. It literally does that job absolutely fine. Um, so we're going to cover both the scenarios with both the weapons on each type and see if um, you know any of these arguments hold water. But I think for the most point, if you have a, you know, you know what your own house is laid out like, you pick what is best for you, you know, in terms of sword of sword length and edges. And if you're using a pole arm, the ideal length of the pole, you know, and the type of head because all of these seem to be that the person will pick whatever they want to use and then say, oh no, the other thing's crap because, you know, I'm in this exact scenario where the whole point of things like this should be to actually evaluate what works and what doesn't. So let's have a go. Right, we are first going to look at the corridor type example where you've got a straight line in front of you. Now, no surprise, this is where pole arms absolutely excel because of the fact that you can obviously get a lot of reach with them. And a thing I want to point out with the pole arms is that you can adjust your grip along them depending on where you want the head to go. So to stand back and demonstrate that, without actually physically moving, I can move the pole arm, you know, in my hand depending on arm position. So there's a lot of way with pole arms that you can actually get around the length of the pole to your advantage to give yourself more reach or less reach depending on what you want to do. 
because obviously you can carry it under your arm with about half of it each way, still advance with it if you wanted to. Now, the disadvantage of a pole arm that isn't going to become evident in a corridor is the fact that obviously you have got a length of wood behind you. The shorter the pole arm, obviously the less chance of banging into stuff, but that also gives you less reach. Now, we're also assuming that the person breaking in isn't using a pole arm, because this, this forum thread wasn't about, you know, people with spears and swords fighting in uh, houses. It was more about, you know, everyday items that somebody might be breaking into your house within a home invasion type scenario versus actual proper medieval weapon type things, or, you know, any of the sort of old melee weapons before we get into firearms. So, yes, the pole arm is very good in a corridor, but it does have the disadvantage of, say, as I've said, that once you get into a smaller thing, which will become evident in a minute, you have a disadvantage. Right, a sword. Absolutely no problem here whatsoever. If you have a sword of a good length, you can thrust with it, you can cut with it, you can block with it. Sword works just as well. Neither of them have an advantage or a disadvantage. I'd give the advantage, obviously, for reach of a pole arm, but I'd be perfectly happy with a sword. And in this um, scenario, there isn't really too long a sword you'll have an issue with, because I'll bring this up when we go to the doorways thing, that having a massively long rapier or zweihander isn't actually a good idea. Just because it's a sword, it'll have the same fall, you know, problems. But with this one, either is fine. I'd prefer a pole arm for a corridor, but a cutlass to sort of standard length sword is going to be absolutely fine. If we assume other people have had worse machetes, you know, but maybe claw hammers, uh, crowbars, things like that, the sword easily wins. Very controllable. It thrusts, it cuts, you know, you could have a two-edged sword if you wanted to. Another thing that I'll just bring up now is people on about somebody grabbing the blade and taking it away from you. If you've got good control over it, you could also put a lanyard on any of these in your hand. If somebody was to try and grab that and you've got a sharp edge, this isn't like the half swording sort of thing. If somebody tries to grab a blade like this and then you pull it or push it quickly, it's going to slice their hand to ribbons, especially with a double-edged sword. So, um, yeah, somebody can't literally, unless they're so much stronger than you, um, you know, there's no way that somebody can grab a blade of a sword if they've got regular hands or thin gloves on and still, you know, have an advantage at trying to grapple it away from you You'll still have more control with the hilt. Right, now let's go to doorways because this is where it gets more interesting. So now we're going to have a look at a doorway. So what you can see here is obviously there's a door on this side, sort of a side door, front door type door, and there's the corridor I was just in. So here you have to come round the corner. So we can assume where the camera is is where the person breaking in is, or they might be further back into a room or somewhere else. But we'll have, we'll have a look at how well you can go around the corner using each of the things. So I'll get them ready and then I'll just do a scenario of coming around the corner. But also the main um, sort of point of this is being able to keep the weapons point where you're going. Um, so, you know, if somebody did jump out at you as you were coming around the corner, you are ready to go as quickly as possible. Um, and this is where the sword, I think, is going to definitely have the advantage, but that doesn't mean a pole arm is useless for this, like some people are implying. So, let's test them both out now. So, first off, with a pole arm, you can bring this through a doorway at this sort of angle, assuming it's not narrower, absolutely fine, while keeping the point and the cutting edge that way. Again, it's more difficult than using a sword, but it can be done. But again, I am using this as an example of having one that's about six foot from top to bottom. I think if you're actually using it in a house, you might want about sort of um, a foot or two knocked off the end of this pole, and then I think you'd still have nearly all the advantages of a pole arm, even with a shorter pole. Um, but, you know, you'd have a lot less issue going around doorways with it. Um, but yes, just to demonstrate, you can basically keep the point on, you know, as you come around the corner. That's not actually an issue. Again, it's still harder to move this. I'm not going to disagree with that. But the point is that you still can do that and then have masses more reach as you go into somewhere than you would do with a sword. But again, I think the sword's going to be better for this just to demonstrate it. Yeah, the sword definitely wins here, but again, a pole arm, if you had less than six feet from top to tip, um, especially I'd say four feet, I think would be ideal for this, the pole arm is still going to be very good. 
but I don't think, at least in a corridor like this, again, in a narrower corridor, the sword is always going to have an advantage if, you know, it's tighter doorways and things like that, like little old cottage doorways. The point is that, you know, with these, you can still come around the corner and have the tip basically facing where you think somebody might jump out at you from. Um, another advantage I'd say actually goes better with the sword is you can kind of bring it up like this if you need to, rather than the point forwards. And that way it's blocking something swinging at your head, say from around the corner, if there was somebody waiting with a bat, that actually gives you a bit of an advantage. And you can still bring it down quickly or, you know, bring it down and then follow up with a thrust. So I'd give this one's advantage to a sword and actually, like I was saying, with a handle like this, you can actually just bring it forward and break somebody's sort of jaw with it. So, sword definitely has the advantage here, but again, the pole arm isn't useless if you've had it cut down to a reasonable length to work inside a house. Okay, so now this room. So, what this one's hopefully going to demonstrate is with a bit of clutter, like here, and furniture, you can't see it, but I've got my bed here. Um, so, it means that when I walk into this room, although I can bring a sword or something around like that as I come in, um, I can't actually physically move around it unless I jumped over furniture. Because I think this was the other sort of point people were making in the thread is what happens if there's clutter in a room or furniture in a room that would affect your ability to move or swing around. So we've looked at doorways, we've looked at straight corridors, now let's look at sort of rectangular shaped rooms, I mean they could be oval rooms, whatever. But the idea that you might be having to advance on somebody or whatever um, while um, using either a pole arm or a sword. So let me go grab them. So let's start off again with the glaive first, just for consistency. So we're coming around the thing as before, and then we're swinging round. Right, so, can I bring this around all right? Yes, I can. Again, I'm having to be careful how I'm standing in the room. I prefer a sword for this, but the advantage is, once you've got to the stage where you're, you know, in a good position, you've got a lot more reach again inside the room. So if you had, say, a dining table or something big in the middle of a room or somewhere in the room and somebody was behind it, if as long as you've got a decent amount of room, like we said, which doesn't seem to be an issue, even with my cluttered, you know, um, surplus filled house, um, you can still, you know, go at people. Um, also, another thing of pole arms is because the ceiling height in houses, this is why you don't want one any more than six feet for use in a house, as I was saying before, or with doorways and everything else. Um, shorter actually seems to be better with these sort of things for houses. Right, but the point is, like I was saying, that you can come around the corner with the tip ready, you know, just as long as you're being careful of doorways, you can come in with the tip ready or the edge ready, and then, you know, very quickly thrust it at somebody if needed. Right, so that's the pole arm, we know that works with the glaive. Right, now let's get the sword and test that. Just remembering where I put it, there we go. So again, we're coming round, we're sort of slicing the pie if you like as you do it, and then we're into the room, and again, there's, there's no issue, this is easier to use in the confined space, Again, but then you're suffering reach. But the point is, with all of these, like I keep saying, is a pole arm and a sword are fine as long as you've looked at what works for the sort of room shape you're in. With either one, you know, if you're in a house that has lots of very small rooms and doorways, I would definitely prefer something like a cutlass. If you've got corridors and big open rooms, um, a pole arm is the way to go. If you've got a mix of both, if both are a sensible length, either is going to work. And again, with a sword, you could have a slightly longer sword than this if you wanted, that would still work, because again, you can come around a corner and still have, you know, a, quite a bit of extra height, but not something so I hand sized And like I said, with the pole arm, I could have made it even more practical for this if it had a shorter handle. And a spear is still a spear, even if it's a short spear, because there are people making the, you know, arguments I saw saying, oh, well, because I don't like spears for this sort of thing, I'm going to claim that it's not actually a spear anymore and it's something else if it has a really short, you know, shaft on it or half, whatever you want to call it. Now, if, if it's got a spear tip on it, it's still a spear, even if it's a short spear. Obviously, something, a pike or full-on, you know, really long sort of eight-foot pole length is not something you want for um, in a building, but six foot or less, I think, is going to work absolutely fine, even with clutter, because, as I said, you can get around most corners and things. But, yeah, 
the reason the cutlass works so well for this, as I said, is because cutlasses were designed for using in close quarters on ships, you know, both below deck and above deck. So they're kind of the optimum design for use in a dwelling because of the, you know, size of them. But as said, with pole arms and with um, the swords, pick one you like the blade shape of, pick one, you know, that's an ideal length for you. Again, things like cutlasses, falchions, all those, they're much easier to use than long swords, arming swords, things like that, um, because they just feel good in the hand and they're relying a lot on your strength rather than actual, you know, practical swordsmanship, if you like. But again, um, I don't think anybody breaking into a house with a crowbar or, you know, anything like that is going to stay around long if they see somebody either with a pole arm coming at them or a cutlass or a sabre or whatever. Although, I will say on sabres I wouldn't recommend those because although sabres have the nicer length to them, as you can see with a cutlass, the point is very much, pretty much in line with the hilt. With a lot of sabres, because of how they curve, you have to have a lot more practice at thrusting with them. So again, they're not that practical. I'm basically thinking of people that don't have much time to train with these things, but they've got them. Anyway, there you go. Hopefully I've explained all the things that were people were arguing about in that thread while, um, you know, showing them with practical actual things. And we can come to the agreement as adults that both swords and short pole arms work absolutely fine in this scenario.